But what I would consider to be the most profound benefit of fermentation would be the bacteria themselves, um, you know, what people call probiotics. And um, what's significant about them is that, um, well, you know, contrary to the indoctrination that most of us has, have received throughout our lives about, you know, how dangerous bacteria are, how bad bacteria are, how much we need to avoid bacteria, um, you know, all the terrible things that they can do with us, uh, do to us, it, it turns out that bacteria are the building blocks of all life and you know evolutionary biologists are rapidly coming to a consensus that you know all life is evolved from bacteria and the flip side of that is that no form of life has ever lived without bacteria so in our human bodies you know we are each host to something like 1 trillion bacteria and um, you know these aren't you know freeloaders they're not creating problems for us you know they give us much of our functionality so you know Bacteria in our intestines enable us to effectively digest food and assimilate nutrients from our food. Bacteria in our intestines synthesize nutrients for us that we don't have to find in food. Um, what we think of as our immune system is mostly the work of bacteria in our intestines. And in the last few years, there's been extraordinary research demonstrating that serotonin and other chemical compounds that determine our brain function, how we think, how we feel, are regulated by gut bacteria in ways that we don't fully understand. The abilities of the cells of our livers to regenerate um, is, is, is related to bacteria in our intestines. I mean, almost, almost every system of our bodies relates to these um, uh, elaborate bacterial communities, uh, uh, primarily in our, in our intestines, but really um, you know, on all of the surfaces of our bodies as well. Um, and because of the war on bacteria because of chemical exposure, um, you know, because of antibiotic drugs and antibacterial cleansing products and chlorinated water. Um, you know, we, uh, uh, we have experienced in, you know, over the last century, diminished biodiversity. Um, in our intestines. And, you know, biodiversity is generally something people think about, you know, out there, um, you know, having to do with trees and uh, whales and other ocean life and um, megafauna. And I mean, I don't mean to diminish the importance of that. I mean, that's, I mean, that's all very real, that kind of uh, diminished biodiversity. But biodiversity also exists and is important within us, um, you know, and, and, you know, across our populations, we are uh, sort of seeing diminished biodiversity of, of gut bacteria um, and uh, you know a lot of the thinking about what's behind some of the uh, emergent uh, epidemics that, that, that we're seeing um, you know is you know they're all related to, to, to gut bacteria so I think that there's a you know compelling reason to cultivate greater biodiversity to restore biodiversity and um, you know one way people do this is with little capsules probiotics um, but most probiotic capsules are you know a billion copies of you know one or two or three proprietary strains whereas you know traditional fermented foods are literally embodiments of biodiversity because they incorporate the diversity of bacteria that is present on all living things. Um, and so, you know, the diversity of what's in the cabbage, the diversity of what's in the carrot, um, um, and everything else. So, you know, eating living fermented foods, meaning fermented foods that have not been heat, uh, uh, cooked or, or heat processed after their fermentation, which would kill the bacteria, is a really uh, excellent way to cultivate biodiversity. And I would even go a little further to say that, you know, eating varied fermented foods um, uh, does a lot more to, to build biodiversity than just keeping on eating a singular fermented food. Um, so, you know, diversity is kind of its own reward.